Hey, welcome to a brand new episode of Game Changer Podcast. I'm David Villa. I'm here with my lovely bride, Diana Villa. Good day. How are you? <laughs> what the heck are you from I Australia? Know. I don't know. I don't even get it. Maybe I am. Maybe we have someone listening from Australia. Is that such a bad thing? No, it's not. But I'm not. I'm from Tampa, Florida. But um, hope you're having a wonderful day. And if you are with us today, we're going to dive into the topic of marriage and uh, we've been married 30 years, just celebrated 30 years together. And, uh, you know, I would say, like some people say, yeah, we were married for 30 years and we dated for five, but we dated for about three months. And, uh, <laughs> I and would say three days, <laughs> about three, yeah, about three months ish. And, um, then we got married and, uh, we are still together. She has not killed me. And, um, and so I, I think thought that, about it a few you, times. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about it. You know, strike we're gonna, that from the record. Strike that from the record. Yeah. Dateline, if you're listening. Um, we're just going to talk a little bit about, we have some notes here, but a lot of this is going to come from our heart right off the get. Um, this is going to be two part episode. So we'll stop it somewhere in the middle and then come back and it'll be two parts, two different podcasts. Um, so let's just go into it a little bit here. Um, Let's start with communication. You know, we, by the way, can we just say this? I guess putting this disclaimer out there from the very beginning. Um, and, you know, and it's not a secret. I mean, those who work with us, our family, those who are around us, they've seen the good, the bad, the ugly from us. We're extremely passionate people. Um, you know, we uh, have worked together as well as been married to one another for 30 years. We've also run a business for, you know, for 27 years. And, um, you know, we, we haven't always done and, and a lot uh, what's right. We can write a book. We often say, Diana, probably what this thick you say. Of what uh, not what, to do? What, lots of things. I have lots of things that I can write about what is not it, how to many do. Of those things are, how many of those things are about me, like what I shouldn't do <laughs> or what the husband shouldn't I do? I said what I'm not supposed to do. That's a thick book? What not to do. Is that a thick book? It's very thin. It's very actually thin. very like clip It's like noted. a bite-sized book. <laughs> cliff notes. <laughs> Mine, on the other hand, to one she's going to write for what... I, oh, the Encyclopedia guy do, yes. size, yes. yes. Novel. Like, it's like several volumes. Like Lord of the Rings style. Yeah. So let's, let's, but so, we're, so we're not experts with, re, with the, we're not experts in living it out our entire 30 years by far. Um, probably not even the majority of that. But here's the thing I think we are qualified experts in, you know, what not to do. So therefore we know what to do. And always keeping God in the middle. And so, and even when we are as passionate individuals that didn't have any mentorship when it came to this, you know, you were 17, I was 20. Um, we, you know, we, we didn't have any mentorship. Our, both of our families, we came from broken families. Um, so, you know, it, the odds were against us from the get-go, but we had God. And um, so hopefully we can just help somebody. And we won't get into, maybe one day we'll get into like our complete testimony and things like that because there's a whole lot of other things that threw a lot of other odds against it. But I just want to start with, let's go over the basics. Let's start with communication. All right, Colossians 4.6. Uh, why don't you read that? Let your conversations... By the way, you see that, how good that communication is there? I said, why don't you read that? So, you know, I'm letting you do it. Okay. That's a, that's a form of like communication. Except for communication you're still talking. talking. And actually that uh, is the what not to do at work right there, everybody. Chapter one in Diana's book to David. So stop talking. <laughs> Let your conversations be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Colossians 4, 6. Mm. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. So I think our marriages only work because of God, but also I think that, you know, whether we've done it or not, our commitment is to always learn how to better communicate in a way that honors one another and doesn't diminish each other. Now, we've done that. We've done it recently. We've done it a lot because we're passionate people. We carry our emotions on, the, on our sleeves, but we're committed to learning how and to get better at communicating with one another in a way that honors one another. And we've done that even if we're dead wrong or really mad at one another, even though we've gotten into disagreements in front of people that are close to us. 
we've also guarded ourselves to protect and cover one another multiple times when it comes to communication. And I think communication is really the binding force in not only our marriage, but in others. And when we communicate respectfully, it improves our intimacy, our joy, and our connection. So I think back of the many senseless arguments, right, between you and I. I can't help but ask, well, was it worth it? You know, did I really, you know, ra- need to raise my voice like that? You know, what was lying beneath the surface? Countless arguments over the years. And um, what do you think? You know, I think over the course of time, I've begun to examine reacting versus responses. Mm-hmm. And I think that um, I would say a bulk of our marriage, we operated in reaction, but reaction is often driven by emotion. And it's an emotion to what has happened, already did happen, what we're in the middle of. And so I feel like, um, you know, it's always a journey. And I think if we're not careful, we could always retreat back to to <clears throat> things that we used to do, which seems uh, typical. But I, I think for me personally, it's one of those things that um, I've been trying to make sure my responses are not based on what's going on at that moment, but they are methodical and they are, you know, responses that give honor to God. So at the end of the day, no matter how we, you know, whatever we're going through, we have a a responsibility to be God honoring with our, you know, speech, with our actions. And when you put it up to that, like I can say, honestly, um, I don't always, you know, succeed in that. Um, but I think when you find yourself, um, reacting. Um, I think you can be very quick to, to pause it and go, Hey, you know what? I let that get the best of me and acknowledge like, Hey, that wasn't appropriate. The way, the reason why I feel that way may be justified, but it's not still doesn't justify my actions. And so I think really noticing that and recognizing that and putting into practice, like it's okay to like pause. I feel like sometimes when you're in the the heat or the thick, thick of an, of a argument, it's very easy to go, you know, sideways. And so I was just talking with someone uh, last week and I said, you know, it's difficult and I can't say we've always done it, but maybe beforehand setting some um, safe words that you know that, hey, this... And words, not words like stupid <laughs> or dummy. <laughs> Some or words that up. automatically, like, and those have to be predetermined. So I think the way you, you know, you you keep your words appropriate is like, you know, I mean, how many of us have said something and as soon as we said it, we thought, oh, that yeah. probably wasn't appropriate. And that's probably going to get a reaction that I don't want. But I think if you predetermine um, some some boundaries of, you know, discuss, you know, discussing things fairly, mm-hmm. arguing fairly, maybe have a safe word, maybe have a safe motion that yeah. when this person means we're going to pause this right now, we're not going to forget about it. That's another, you know, I think hard thing in communication. Communication is listening, but it's also not ignoring. Yeah. You have to come back to it. So I think those are some things that I think help. Well, we're going to get to some of these points you just mentioned before we get ahead of, ahead of ourselves. So let's look at one of them here. We haven't done this over the years. We did this wrong many, many times. We used to, you know, not only did we do this wrong, we would get to a place where we would use like our family members in the past, probably against each other. You know, you know, you know, you're, you're just like your dumb, you know, dad, or you're just like your stupid mom or whatever. Or, you know what, that's what your mom did. You know, we'd use those types of situations to try to hurt one another. So we have to st- stick with the issue. Here's a point you can write down. Stick with the issue. When, when we use arguments as opportunities, and we've done this to bring up the past issues, like, you know, you're just like your sorry dad, or, you know, if you use that, I could promise you that that's not a God thing, number one. Number two, it's never going to, um, it's never going to work out in your favor. It's always going to bring a defense mechanism up. And so, you know, uh, when we use arguments as opportunities to bring up past issues, you know, um, we bruise our spouse with our words. But I think and honestly, you have to look at that from the standpoint, but those may be unresolved issues that instead sure. of going back to them and finding resolve, we ignore them and put them under the rug. And if you sweep, you know, dirt under the rug, it eventually comes out and mm-hmm. it doesn't come out as a whole dust ball. It comes out in pieces at different times and in different ways. And so I think part of that is it's really important is why. I think maybe that would be a different point. 
you know, dealing with it. But I mean, so, so let's look at it, but I don't, but I don't think that we could justify, there is no justifying using arguments as an opportunity to bring up past issues. So we're trying to do is, is, is cover all the bases here. So let's say one of the other bases, and I'm sure that's one of the points here because, um, that we've got that we talk, you know, talks about that, maybe dealing with it, making sure, but starting with sticking with the issue, you know, maybe, you know, sticking with the issue. So the issue is the issue. Don't, humiliate embarrass or belittle the other person you know um you know that's not our goal instead whenever we find ourselves in a heated conversation try to stick to the issue at hand and not bring up the past because it's very it's very difficult to not do especially when there's unresolved issues but at the same time it's never going to ever i mean it doesn't really matter if you've done this everyone listening has done this we've done this many times i don't think it's ever worked you know i don't think it ever brings resolve I don't think it ever brings, you know, um, it never, it never accomplishes anything positive. It only hurts more. <clears throat> what do you think? I mean, don't you think it's important to stick to the issue? Yes. <laughs> if you can't tell which one of the ones in our relationship maybe have an issue with that, I don't know. I don't know. Cause I mean, I don't know. How about this? Listen to understand. Here's my issue, right? Listen to understand. Don't listen to respond. There you go. So there's there. There's one for David right there. All right. Listen to understand. Don't listen to respond. Go at it. Go on. T come on. Take 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 me on. What do I do? I listen to respond. Right. A lot. Isn't that probably no? I say you listen to react. Listen. To, okay. <laughs> Where I started that. So listen. Listening to, re to respond is I'm gonna close uh -huh. my mouth. I'm sorry. I listen to react. I'm gonna open my ears. And I'm going to respond accordingly. <laughs> well, but you know what? I think it's, but I, I got down here as a point. Listen to understand. That's what we're supposed to do. Don't listen to respond. So yeah, you got to respond, but only after you understand. So if you're listening to respond, then you're list, you're not hearing. If I'm listening just so I can pick out a piece, which I've done, you know, if you're, if I'm listening to you just so I can find that thing that you said that exposes the weakness in you just so I can respond. That's wrong, right? I'm not understanding. Well, I think listening to bring resolve is probably a better way to say that because you have to understand, but you always has, have to have the motive of, of resolve. Let me ask you this, though, but can I actually resolve it without understanding what's wrong? No. Okay. So I have to listen to understand first. With the motive to, res to resolve. <laughs> All right, so we're going to add something to the point. Listen to understand with the motive to resolve. Don't just listen well, to Because I think sometimes we listen to react with the motive to win. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is there's no winner in those types of situations. You both lose right. because, you know, one person's drained. The other person may feel like, you know, rocky, but... When you come to reality, you've just caused a, a wedge or a divide, so no one wins in that in isolation or 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 that separating. So <clears> we, <throat> I feel like you have to, you know, make sure that you are listening to understand to resolve versus listening respond. to understand to uh, respond. to respond. Sorry, listening to respond, you know, to bring resolve to to not. There's no winners when someone wins. You know, somebody loses. And the fact of the matter is if one of us lose, we both lose. I struggle with this big time. You know, the other person is talking. It's, we have to discipline ourselves to let them finish. I, I struggle with that because I'm a lot of times the salesman and the business person in me, the control, the, the choleric, the controller in me. And if guys or, or gals, if you, if you struggle with, or I say struggle with, if you have that choleric gene where you're, a controlling person then here's the thing that's your temperament right choleric is not a bad thing there's a there's an element of that that god gave you <clears throat> that god placed in you he placed that in you as a characteristic that's probably could be used for some very positive you know accomplishments in life but if you're in communication and you listen to respond and not listen to understand and then you know you are waiting for them to finish you know so you cut them off and just so you can respond it's a discipline to, to, you know that we have to that we have to apply to ourselves to let someone finish it's a discipline it's something that is genuinely going to have to be something that you work out as a discipline you know i i looked it up and amplified is a really good version for james 119 
and the one the verse that's known in that is you know to be slow to speak mm-hmm. and swift to hear but um in the amplified version it says understands this understand this my beloved brothers and sisters let everyone be quick to hear be careful thoughtful listener mm. <clears throat> slow to speak a speaker of carefully chosen wo- words and slow to anger, patient, reflective, forgiving. That's good. That's important, you know, because we often want to use our words as a weapon. Mm-hmm. And the, the problem with that is weapons leave wounds. Yep. And sometimes they're deep and sometimes they're shallow, but they're still wounds nonetheless. So I think, um, you know, it's really important to meditate that on that when you are dealing with, you know, life struggles and resistance and, you know, frustrations in marriage. Um, because if you don't, it'll, you know, if you're not quick to hear, you're going to assume mm-hmm. and you know what they say about assuming. Yeah. If you don't listen, you're going to try and resolve, but you haven't really heard what the issue. And sometimes I think for women, um, you, don't want someone to resolve it for you you want someone to listen and go hey i hear what you're saying and ask what are you needing in this so i think if you're you're listening you're listening beyond the words and you're listening to body language and you know that's not words right but they're saying words but body language sometimes says more than words and you're also listening to emotion you know so you can see is this an angry situation is this a hurtful situation so you have to listen to emotion um, and I think when you are able to, to, to pull back and do that, I think it helps you respond accordingly. So men, you're hearing this, this is, this is, it's up to us, you know, to speak one another's languages. So if women are saying, she's saying that they use body language and, you know, as well as natural language that we have to hear what they're saying, we have to speak that language. And it's something that really is foreign to us by nature. But can I say this? Um, as a man, you know, and this is something my wife, will, my wife will agree with, and she's a woman. But I'll say this to women: you have to learn how to speak men's language as well, because we don't understand body language all the time. So, where we both have to, we both have to learn from one another and speak one another's language, and then also be willing to help each other out. Where, because I'm going to read something that I wrote down here that is going to, I think, is going to, is going to really step on a lot of our toes. It steps on my toes. I know it'll step on your toes. <laughs> So it will. Did you write it for that motive? To no, you know, I'm just, well, I mean, it steps on my toes like crazy. So yeah, I wrote it for the motive of, of really putting something down that is going to, sh- it's, it's going to affect us all. There's, there's not a single person that maybe you've gotten this right sometime. Okay. But the, the fact that we've got it written down here shows you probably, we probably have it right more than most because of the fact that even know looking at it and admitting it exists, but arguing with our spouse isn't about being right. I want to say that again. Arguing with our spouse isn't about being right. It's about recognizing where we're, we're, where we are wrong. And I'm going to just be honest with you. I would say the majority of arguments that we've been in in 30 years, I did not enter those arguments, nor did I exit those arguments, you know, <laughs> trying to recognize where I was wrong. Nor did you, you know, so I'll just say that for you. So how? So I don't need you to just say it for me. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, but can I say this? So how how imperative is it that we flip this around? Because it's about not being right, but recognizing where we're wrong. And arguments, if we look at it that way, they're a gift. That didn't feel, they don't feel that way. It's like, you know, you, you're like, okay, well, that's like, it feels like a lump of coal on Christmas <laughs> gift, right? But it's a gift allowing us to see what frustrates and upsets our spouse. Giving us an inside look into their heart. That is so hard. Because you don't like that person if you let emotions get involved in it, right? At that moment, you don't like that person. You know, you don't want to be, you don't want to see the good. You don't even want to see their heart. You want to stomp their heart, you know. And, um, but it's imperative. It's really, it's, re- but it, the, and if you go, man, I am so far, because we, we, we're, we're thinking, I'm so far down the wrong path. Well, it's because there's a lot of things that we've allowed to happen. <clears throat> and all we have to do is just turn around Really, the repentance is just turn around, and go the other way, and start doing it right. Eventually, you'll be out of the hole you're in, and you'll be at level playing field. You know, when I'm listening to this, it sounds um, good, <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, I think you already have to have some predetermined ways. If you're going to be 
in a household, in a marriage, doing life with somebody, um, even with God in the center, I think you already have to have some predetermined um, ways that you're going to handle conflict. Mm -hmm. I think not having those predetermined ways, and that's going to be a, a combination of where you came from and where that other person came from, right. because um, they they are different. Families are different. Um, I make jokes a lot, and we talk a lot about our children, like watching the differences of how their families, how our kids were raised in a very loud, rambunc rambunctious, passionate, and then um, how some of our children's spouses are are so much more like laid back and watching them filter through things in life because they're a combination of where they were raised and how they were raised with them, their beliefs and their morals and their personalities and to find a way for them to, to meld that. It's been interesting. And sometimes I think, you know, man, that wasn't very good of us to, to example in front of them. But I think if you already predetermine you know, when you're getting into, you know, a place where you're, you know, you're going to start life with someone, start predetermining how can we resolve conflict fair in yeah. a way that is God honoring, but yet honoring of one another and brings resolve. So I think, you know, having a plan ahead of time yeah. would be a really good. I mean, no one talked to us about that. I mean, no. we didn't have a plan. We, we were yeah. OJ, we uh, every part a, of our life was OJT. Yeah. It was like OJT on the job training, like all the way. Right. Probably the first 30, 28 years of marriage yeah. was like OJT. Yeah. But um, I think putting some of those safeguards, and you know, we talk about when, you know, before getting married, they talk about like your finances and, and your spiritual beliefs and, and all of that. But we don't talk about, you know, res, you know conflict's going to come, resistance yeah. going to come, issues are going to come. How are you going to, to do that? So I think predetermining is, a, you know, pre-planning how to do that is really a like big a thing. A yeah. Um, so next point, by the way, this is our 400th episode, and, you know, we wanted to, to talk about marriage. Um, we've talked about it before, but, you know, we feel like that that God is uh, working through marriages and the enemy is always trying to attack marriages. And uh, maybe you're married, maybe you're not married, maybe you were married, maybe you're believing to get married, but you know these are good things for you to have. And um, But the third point on our 400th episode of Game Changer, uh, what an incredible uh, number, is you know you watch boxing or MMA or any kind of matches and they have those ring those the bell rings right ding 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 and they go back to their corners you know and they get that break well the next one is kind of along the lines of that take up take a five minute timeout when emotions get heated it's kind of what you were talking about at the beginning I knew this point was coming so I didn't want you to get ahead of the the deal but you know when water starts boiling back away and take a break breathe collect yourself and then approach the situation different and after we take the time to cool off think about how are we truly feeling? Can we continue with the conversation and grow from the disagreement? This is so hard for me because I have a point to prove, right? But go, it goes, going back into the one before that I'm not in this argument to win. I'm in this argument to figure out where I'm wrong. And so it has to, you have to come into this thing with resolution in mind. So it takes a whole mind change. If not, you'll never get through this like five minute deal because, you know, what if at the last minute, right before the bell rings, you know, you're getting ready to take a break and then you take a shot at me and you say something that just, just stings a little bit, right? And I'm like, I can't go into the corner in this five minute break, right? With, with letting her have the upper hand. I mean, especially when that woman is wrong, you know, or something like that, you know, especially when that man is, you know, he said that, I can't believe that. Does he really feel that way? And so, you know, we try to one up each other and instead of taking a break and then, you know, if we allow ourselves to take a cool off period, then it also, and, and sometimes we've had those things forced upon us, maybe even at the office, things like that, or our kids around, you know, before earlier in life, you know, where you're kind of forced to take that break. And when you do, you know, you find out that you will cool off and cooler heads do prevail. And um, so, I mean, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, taking a, taking a break, walking away. I think that away. still boils back down to predetermining how you're going to handle conflict. Like the rules of the, engagement. The, rule, the rules, like you need to lay it out like, you know, that. Sign and you, you can't say, hey, in the middle of it, hold someone, like 
blame someone in that, but I think that's where I feel like maybe having a safe word of that automatically diffuses a situation where it's like, hey, we need to stop for a second. Mm-hmm. What, but it's not a pointing at you or pointing at me, but it's a safe word that says, hey, this right now, I, we have to take a pause right now because it's probably going to get ugly if not. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is once um, your mouth opens up with words, um, you can't take them you back, unfortunately. No. And sometimes um, it takes a long time to, to heal from those or to let those things go. So I think it's better to have a stupid safe word that will automatically trigger, hey, stop and let's pull away with the mindset that we're going to come back when, we're, when, we're, when we've cooled down to be able to discuss it. Um, I was listening to a podcast with Greg, uh, Craig Groche- Groeschel, sorry, and um, he was talking about meetings and having an agenda. You know, I think sometimes you're having discussions about like serious things and maybe you've already thought about it. Like, you know, tonight when I get home and I talk to my husband about this, we, we you both know and he knows. So you guys are, you know, you're on your own mind, you're putting together your points. But I think maybe having even an agenda, if you know it's like a topic that you have to discuss, maybe it's how you're handling your finances or how you're raising your children or, or how you're walking out your faith or how your career is, you know, bubbling over into family time, whatever that is. Maybe if you know it's something that you have to discuss and it could be a heated yeah. discussion, having an agenda for it that not only goes through it and you can methodically talk about those things with a guideline, right? A guideline yeah. will keep you on task or on those key points. Like these are the key points, but you also go ahead and have what is the resolve of it. We're going to work together to what accomplish this, whatever. So maybe having that, he was talking about it from a business perspective, but I could see where you could also apply that in relationships of, because if not, that's where I think without some sort of outline or agenda, that's where I think you can kind of pull things back from your, you know, your past versus staying true to, you know, the topic at hand. So she mentioned stepping back or pulling back. So speaking of that, we're going to pause here for this lesson and we're going to wrap this episode up. And if you're enjoying this discussion on marriage, then we're going to pick right back up with the next point next week. So make sure you don't miss the next episode of the Game Changer podcast. And by the way, if you want to subscribe to us, make sure you Um, find us on YouTube game changer podcast, click the bell to receive notifications and make sure you share it and like it Uh, comment. We'd love to hear your comments. If this is a blessing to you, please comment. We see all the comments. And uh, also if you're on social media and you want to follow us, make sure you tag us on either game changer podcast on Instagram or myself or Diana on Instagram, our handles will be on the screen. And then you can just tell us, you know, uh, what God's doing in your life. We love to see that. Also, the Game Changer app by IPD Agency has just passed 13,000 downloads. A lot of resources there as well. We'd love to connect with you. So we love you guys, and we'll see you next week on another episode of Game Changer Podcast.